Welcome everyone and thank you for joining this webinar about machine learning in retail. I am Maria Jesus Alonso and I am the Head of Communications and Events Manager at BigML. And on behalf of the BigML team, we are very excited to be hosting this webinar that will focus on real-world examples that showcase how machine learning is deployed in the retail industry. And the special focus will be put on waste reduction in food and beverage retail. In the next hour, we will first learn the impact that machine learning is having across the retail industry. And secondly, we will put the focus on a real world example about food and beverage retail. Also, I'll be collecting your comments and at the end of the presentation, the speakers will be uh, ready to reply to each of your questions. Finally, let me also mention that more than 350 people registered to join this webinar from all around the world. So thank you very much for your trust and interest in this event. And we do hope to meet your expectations while you enjoy the sessions from the comfort of your home or of your office. And without further ado, let's start with the first presentation of the webinar, an introductory session about the role that machine learning is playing in the retail sector. The speaker is my colleague, Atakan Chetinsoy, VP of Predictive Applications at BigML, and he has more than 20 years of high-tech product management and uh, product marketing experience with both global brands and VC-founded startups, including Apple, Yahoo, FedEx, Strands, and Beam. At BigML, he works closely with customers and prospects in identifying predictive use cases, proposing machine learning solutions, as well as deploying and uh, measuring them. Thanks for the introduction, Maria Jesus. Uh, it's great to kick off today's uh, virtual event on uh, machine learning uh, in retail. So um, let's get started. As one of the largest sectors uh, of the global economy, uh, the retail industry is characterized uh, by heavy competition, uh, labor-intense operations, and low margins. Uh, as a result, uh, retailers are highly motivated to look for opportunities to uh, further streamline operations and achieve uh, incremental efficiency gains. Uh, in the recent decades, uh, we have also witnessed the uh, entry of uh, new he digital heavy hitters like Amazon, uh, entering and destabilizing the competitive landscape. Uh, resulting in the calls for the so-called brick-and-mortar retail apocalypse. And uh, against this backdrop, uh, uh, we're observing the continuation of uh, several industry megatrends um, in the remainder of the 2020s. Uh, first off, uh, thanks to 24-7 access to information and social media, uh, consumers are much more well-informed about products and services they want. Uh, they expect to be recognized and greeted with consistently great service, regardless of which channel they choose to interact with their favorite brands on. Uh, we can count stores, websites, mobile, social, call centers, among uh, such touch points. Uh, this is known as omni-channel retail, and it means retail firms must break their internal departmental silos to form a 360-degree view of their customers by collecting all the relevant data. In short, being multi-channel doesn't cut it anymore. You have to connect the dots and truly integrate these channels to thrive. The good news is that those companies that can get there are rewarded by extra spend from customers. Personalization, on the other hand, is perhaps the most pervasive and visible trend in retail, which relies on the, uh, the customer data we talked about. It's uh, where the rubber hits the road to deliver uh, highly contextual, contextual offers and recommendations to secure uh, loyalty in an environment where the competition is only a click away. And finally, relentless automation remains uh, critical to scale these type of demanding customer experiences uh, across many channels and stores. Um, this may mean introducing robots to manage warehouses or re-engineering processes that span multiple functional groups, suppliers, partners, you name it. These megatrends all have in common the, the fact that they're all built on heaps of data flowing in real time, uh, which makes them ripe for a healthy dose of machine learning in the form of predictive smart applications. Uh, before we proceed, uh, you may be asking how the reality of the, uh, the ongoing pandemic has affected these megatrends. Uh, on this case, experts pretty much agree that it has only sped up the efforts to, to achieve the perfect balance uh, so retailers uh, have not at all uh, let their foot off the gas pedal 
uh, in their machine learning and, and data-driven initiatives. They reduce foot traffic and physical stores combined with uh, supply chain disruptions that we're experiencing um, all call for much better planning anyways, right? So uh, machine learning can still come to the rescue in that sense. If we are to put uh, machine learning under a magnifying glass, we see that there are many types of uh, business benefits it can deliver. Uh, namely, it allows the retailers uh, to transform large amounts of raw data into actionable real-time insights. Uh, it can deliver uh, timely data-driven data -driven decisions to manage business opportunities and risks ahead of time. Um, this helps retailers boost their operational efficiencies uh, for, for breakthrough results by anticipating and offering products and services that meet and exceed customer expectations. Uh, the automation component allows personnel to focus on higher value added tasks and more personal attention given to shoppers. Uh, finally, machine learning can even be used to identify unusual in-store behavior, cyber threats, uh, to protect operational data sources and physical assets. Uh, to put it more concretely though, uh, a recent uh, NRF uh, National uh, Retail Federation study conducted among nearly 2,000 global retail executives right before the pandemic has uh, revealed that uh, machine learning initiatives have delivered a 7% reduction in operational costs on average and have added up to 10% in related revenue streams. Uh, the pandemic's uh, expected uh, to uh, accelerate the investment in this foundational technology as a result of those early positive results. The, um, we've touched on the, uh, the high-level business impacts, but how do these benefits, uh, benefits really manifest themselves? Uh, if we are to look at that, um, that really happens through numerous predictive applications solving specific retail use cases. There are too many to cover in our limited time here. Uh, but we have a sample of them here that we can see organized by the functional components of a typical uh, simplified retail value chain covering both the back office and the, the customer facing areas. Um, for example, on the purchasing side, assortment planning can be done at a hyper local level with, with machine learning. On the one of the most popular uh, and widespread use cases, of course, demand forecasting. And it's something my fellow uh, speaker, uh, Stephen Kins uh, of CATS AI, will cover. In, in greater detail. Uh, in terms of inventory management, we have examples like Walmart's Eaton system that uh, helps frontline employees categorize the freshness of uh, produce and determine when they will go bad by simply taking a photo. Uh, it can then help them figure out whether the produce should be marked down or disposed altogether. Uh, machine learning can also play a big role in automating warehouse logistics. Uh, as uh, firms can dynamically reroute shipments across multiple distribution centers uh, and um, you know depending on things like weather data or even in temperature fluctuations if there are perishable products involved. Uh, Amazon for example uh, decides the ideal packaging size for a given shipment aided by a smart predictive application to save cost um, as it pertains to, to distribution logistics. Um, the um, uh, store operations is another area ripe for machine learning uh, injection. Uh, for example, um, uh, shrinkage is a big problem for, for retailers uh, to avoid uh, and prevent employee theft, shoplifting, vendor fraud, or, or, or damage. Uh, anomaly detection systems can be used, uh, so corrective action can be taken much faster. Finally, machine learning is used to actively determine the best in store promotions, online personalized product recommendations, as well as cross-sell and upsell scenarios involving call center interactions, depending on the caller's level of satisfaction and receptiveness. In summary, machine learning has already helped deliver numerous examples of the seamless omni-channel shopping experience most retailers are after these days. So the menu of possibilities is quite long uh, when it comes to smart retail applications. However, traditionally, the the industry had a middling absorption rate of new technologies uh, behind other sectors like finance, business services, telecom, or media, uh, but that's fast changing. If we dig deeper into the levels of machine learning adoption by function, we can see that uh, overall there's a pretty balanced picture between different activities in the value chain, um, with barely a third of the, the, the survey respondents in the case of the NRF survey reporting at least one production application in their respective functions um, uh, that you can see here. 
but they're far from mainstream, really. Uh, the, the gray areas here, uh, they're also notable in the sense that the, the executive surveyed uh, mentioned those as additional investment areas that they plan on um, developing new initiatives towards. So the, uh, it's, it's so, sort of a mixed um, uh, picture here. Uh, with some good early examples but again we're far from being mainstream across all the different functions that machine learning could be injected into one real life example of a retail machine learning use case from the big ml ecosystem is the promotion cannibalization analytics uh, solution our uh, partner in europe a1 digital launched for a european supermarket chain we covered this on, on the big ml blog the link is here if you would like to find out more about it the smart application analyzes how promotional products impact the sales of other non-promotional products for example a promotion on chicken breasts had significant negative effects on the sales of beef steaks and turkey products to the tune of more than 20% within the period of the analyzed promotions. With machine learning, such scenarios can be anticipated um, uh, well in advance, right? Uh, and the replenishment cycles and, and demand planning can adapt to it accordingly to, to, to minimize waste or maximize overall sales. Um, uh, this is especially important when the products of interest uh, tend to spoil fast, as was the case for these food items. In the solution, the BigML platform fully automates the time-consuming work of hand-tuning machine learning models and executing complex custom workflows that span multiple machine learning techniques, such as regression, association discovery, anomaly detection, etc. As uh, um, demonstrated in many commercial applications, uh, machine learning software platforms such as BigML are proven to accelerate the adoption of machine learning use cases. Uh, they offer a strong foundational layer, packaging the, the best algorithms and standardized workflows in an easily consumable manner so businesses can achieve faster time to market uh, while being provided guardrails to prevent any technical risks and uh, more efficiently managing and maintaining production models. Uh, this helps the staff and analysts and, and customer-facing personnel uh, help solve real-life business problems uh, by combining their in-house in subject matter expertise with the state-of-the-art predictive analytics in an iterative fashion. We'd be happy to demonstrate any of these capabilities to our audience after the event. Uh, we don't have time here to delve into individual machine learning techniques and how they tie into specific use cases, but before any algorithms are involved, every machine learning project starts with a simple question. It uh, helps you basically create a, a problem statement about the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, very quickly here, we see some example questions a retail analyst or a marketer can pose uh, that can ultimately be set up as fully automated custom workflows on a tool like BigML. You know, should these fresh produce be marked down as, as we uh, heard some prior examples about? Uh, what, what is the, the lifetime value of this customer? So uh, I know where to stop as it comes to you know, marketing offers. Uh, how many cases of a particular product will sell next month? Um, are these customers uh, similar? If so, can I segment them together and, and send them the, the same offer? Um, is this product review real or fake? A big problem on the, uh, the, the, the online store side uh, where uh, sometimes uh, you know, certain brands do not play fair or uh, they may be using bots. Um, and what are the necessary conditions that can be tied to high net promoter scores so we know what we're doing right and we never lose sight of that. Uh, before I conclude my presentation here, um, there are a few takes of, takeaways that will hopefully get your uh, audience to think, uh, that our audience to think on their feet as they, they put together their, their plans pertaining to, to machine learning in the, the next year. Uh, first of all, um, as, as we've seen, there are some great early adopters and um, with, with deeper pockets perhaps and, and bigger budgets that have achieved uh, uh, some great results with machine learning already. So they kind of have paved the way for us, but um, the, the numbers show uh, that uh, we're not anywhere near mainstream adoption yet. So uh, players like Cats AI in, in the fruit processing and uh, areas, for example, is, is helping mid-market companies and, 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 and alongside uh, uh, larger firms so achieve that um, that type of effect uh, down the road, right? Uh, same here for, for, for BigML, what we're op offering has to provide uh, as it pertains to 
to, to applications in the retail space. Um, secondly, uh, think big, but start small. You know, this is a sort of a winning formula for many big ML customers. Uh, if you do it right, the smart applications uh, can, over time, create competitive differentiation for you because you get to know your customers better and you get to, to act on events taking place in a real life stream of data much faster. Uh, so think strategically as you uh, set off on your journey, but uh, start with a very concrete, measurable, uh, easier to launch project that the whole organization can easily digest and, and build confidence with. Uh, thirdly, uh, the successful machine learning applications in retail are not about eliminating uh, the human workforce. Um, uh, time and again, studies have shown, including uh, you know some published on the Harvard Business Review, that this is a very short-sighted way to look at it. And uh, actually, the, the human expertise is very critical in developing and continuously improving machine learning models to get more and more accurate. So that um, uh, that, that human creativity component of subject matter expertise is, uh, is, 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 is very critical. It's not an optional uh, part of the overall solution. So think man plus machine. Uh, finally, um, as I've said before, machine learning platforms can really accelerate your efforts and journeys uh, in, the, in terms of uh, not taking any uh, uh, wrong turns or, uh, or, or ending up with dead ends and uh, having wasted a lot of resources. Uh, because it takes away the worry of having to build your own infrastructure from scratch, instead helping you concentrate on the actual retail business problem that you have, knowing what you know about your business, your supply chains, your vendors, your partners and customers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Atakan, for the interesting presentation, of course. And uh, as you say, now to continue, uh, time to move on with the next session, which, uh, by the way, is going to put a special focus on uh, how to fight waste reduction. And um, this is actually a quite common situation for those working in food and beverage retail. So if you are working in this sector, you are about to find out some interesting insights, as I said, to fight waste reduction. As Stephen Keynes, uh, CEO and co-founder at Cats AI, will present how to do that. Through a 20-year career in investment banking technology and strategy consultancy, Stephen was always looking for efficient opportunities where technology could deliver big gains in business. After uh, building a London-based uh, consultancy firm, he has now moved back to technology to invent Cats AI, the world's first AI demand predictions as a service product. A very interesting uh, product indeed. So Stephen, we look forward to learning more about your case Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the webinar. Good afternoon, Maria. Thank you so much for the for the introduction. So, um, well, a couple of years ago, um, cats I sort of got discovered by Big ML. Um, what we'd been working on, I think, intrigued them a little bit, and they've connected us internally into their organisation, and they've advised and guided us a great deal uh, throughout our evolution. So we're genuinely delighted to be part of this webinar to help showcase how machine learning ML can be used to solve real business problems. So Cat's Eye, or Cat's Eye, as we try and remember to call ourselves, uh, came together thanks to a baker in Windsor in London. Now, this company made the cakes for the royal weddings, but they also had a couple of bakery stores in, in, uh, in South London. One of the new owners was an old colleague, and he asked if we could do something in AI that might help him know what to bake based on likely sales with more confidence. So we tried and iterated, and it worked. Three years and 70,000 retail sites later, during which period we've been joined by and Matthew Forshaw, who's an app from the senior guy from the Alan Turing Institute, and Jane Milton, um, a senior F&B industry advisor, um, plus a number of business and strategic advisors who've helped us enormously on the way. Let's... So we've been supported by um, UK Innovation at Machine Learning Garage, part of the Digital Catapult Group. Of course, Big ML. 
and we are a partner of the Alan Turing Institute in London. Um, they helped us particularly on some leading edge research. I mentioned Matthew earlier as well. We have also been supported by the UK government Department of International Trade. So we recently spoke in a couple of two, two key webinars around the circular economy and uh, getting to net zero. And the last of which was part of the run up to the COP26 event that you'll all, all have heard of. That's enough about us now. So now to you. So are you maybe a producer, a wholesaler, a retail chain, or maybe a combination? Do you forecast? I'm assuming that many of you will, either a combination of these being the long term strategic forecasts, the medium term directional forecasts, and then the short term operational forecasts. Perhaps they are what are technically called naive. Now, I'm not being rude, that's just the technical term for using last period's actuals as a, as a uh, the baseline for the next period's forecast. Or perhaps they rely on some history plus some assumptions. Um, when do you do them? Do you do them quarterly, monthly, perhaps weekly? A mi likely a mixture of, of all of those three. So you've likely got all of those you're probably quite content with their performance. Maybe there's room for improvement, but maybe not enough to lift out the process or system and replace. Um, after all, change is hard, and there's enough to focus on by now. But you're still seeing unintended waste, which you know is bad. Stockouts are also bad. That's another sales missed. But these two images hide a multitude of other inefficiencies that you'll feel, either maybe in logistics and delivery, um, inefficient um, route plan, storage costs, waste disposal, underperforming sales teams, or under or overutilized factories. The reasons for those unintended consequences may, in fact, be difficult to see. Every forecast is wrong. From the ridiculous, like my confident prediction at age 10 and a half to my parents that I will be the next England goalkeeper, or to the more academic, such as the GDP forecast from the OECD, or the sophisticated, like the weather forecast you recently checked on your phone that relies on supercomputing power. But there's likely something missing from your sales forecasts. So without it, you can't get to where you want to be. It might actually explain the tension headache this lady seems to experience. Naive or indeed um, uh, sophisticated statistical forecasts, by their very nature, don't react to future influencing factors. So the less the forecast looks forward for those future influencing factors, and the more it relies on history, the greater the likelihood of those errors building as the time, the day in question, gets closer. And those errors add up every day, for every location, for every product. And they compound into material damage to the environment through waste or your bottom line, again through waste or lost sales. So we're going to be talking about sales in physical locations. So this is a shop, a baker, a cafe, a supermarket a, for food and beverage products. And um, we've got an overly simplified system here, but perhaps you're part of it. The producer takes orders from the warehouse or distributor who takes orders from the retail site. The retail site is the only one with any true visibility of actual end customer demand at that location. Different planning assumptions need to be made at each part of the chain. But those assumptions are based on signals from the first degree customer at best. They are likely un uninformed by insights from the second degree customer, the customer's customer. As assumptions diverge, so the bullwhip of error radiates up the chain. So 
what we need is to build local insight and pass that back up through the chain. This will dampen that bullwhip effect. But you need to get focused. We need near term, because that's where you actually throw your producer, produce away, where your vans make inefficient deliveries and your factories aren't utilized as you'd wish. The near term, next week, at a location, is where it gets real. So let's look at a location. So each location has its own personality, like you and me. The general location has a maybe a cultural feel, has a demographical makeup, which is complex, a structural layout, more and more. A physical retail location, this is the supermarket, the cafe, etc., has again its own personality and its proximity to key features. Perhaps it's near a railway station, in an airport, or on the edge of a countryside. Some of these features are fixed, of course. Others are very dynamic. Perhaps even on a, any particular day, weather, traffic, the front of house staff might change. Now, what about the produce you're selling? There we go. So, if we're talking food, a produce, uh, something you sell, produce might be sugary or salty. It might be vegan, meat or fish. Take away healthy snack food, seasonal treats, morning goods, you get the idea. Nothing sits in a category entirely comfortably. There's always an overlap, gray areas, interplay, complexity. But the day is a simple one. Sell less on a Monday. But what about the third Monday after a school holiday just before he wife? Any given day is unique. It's distance, if you like, to changing weather. It's distance to holidays, past or coming, or, or current. Cultural events, local events, and how it fits within overall trends. So we've talked about three. Now add back that the location and the product. It starts to get crazy complicated very, very quickly. But that's not where the problem ends. Other things impact demand. There will always be an element we'd categorize as random. But the more of a variation we can attribute to a combination of influencing factors, the better. And some ideas are traffic. Um, New people from the past, football, new different local events, related televised programmes, think of um, British Bake, Bake Off. Then, of course, promotions and marketing campaigns, an omni-channel. The list goes on and on. The, the trick is perhaps to know where to stop. But once you're past maybe one or two of these influencing factors it becomes far too complicated complex for us as people and beyond any most complex software as well but there are patterns in there somewhere it's just we have limited chance of finding them maybe we can find one um good example the sale of soup goes up on a cold day or the sales of office lunch deals go down just before a bank holiday weekend, we might actually feel that these are useful. But they are likely to be rudimentary and actually can be misleading. Correlation is not necessarily the same as causation after all. But there's likely to be thousands, if not millions, of micro-causal patterns just waiting to be found in this soup of complexity. So, Capsar use the tools with Big ML to seek out those patterns. Um, we use many of the new suite of the Big ML capabilities. Um, Atacam's already given you a quick overview of some of them, so I'll just give you a, a few real examples of how we use them. Um, so topic models, NLP, hunt for the patterns in the naming of products. So we can disaggregate features such as 
it's a treat, it's salad, it's got salt, it's salty, it's sugary, comparing against thousands of other examples. Or sophisticated clustering helps us group millions of sales examples and tag against likely causal patterns. Association models are cool. They give us an if this, then that type insight. So maybe if the temperature is less than 20 degrees midweek and we're far from a holiday, but likely rain tomorrow, then there is a probability of sale downward pressure. The kings of our solution are the neural networks and deep random forests that populate the bespoke models we create. I suppose you could call what we do multivariate time series forecasting, but we've added and added and added and added layers on top of, of, on top of that approach. But these are our master pattern seekers. It's a complex machine learning team of tools that comes together to find causal factors that can be used to effectively make predictions in the future. But to make those predictions real, you've got to get focused deep into the detail. Every location, every product, every day, analysed across perhaps tens or hundreds of interrelated influence factors. But Cat and I can give you a simple answer, a prediction, one number per product, per location, per day. In short, there's no complex graphs to decipher. It means you can get on and make more informed decisions using our number as an input. That number as an input helps you make more informed decisions. Each and every slight improvement that you make adds up. This is what we said at the COP26. Imagine being even 2% better across your locations and products every day for a year your ability to create compounding business returns will be substantial. So with that better insight comes preparedness, what we in the UK called getting your ducks in a row. Having that foresight confidence will feed back through your entire business, production, marketing, logistics, everyone in your business can all be set up to take advantage of these improvements, be they slight or major. Now, but how? So, as um, Maria has uh, said in her introduction, we've got what we think is the world's first demand predictions as a service product. So, we take care of all of the complexity and we can fit into your organization seamlessly. We can take tens or even hundreds of influencing factors into our models without you having to worry about it. We're a repeatable process with 100% STP. As I said, we've been evolving this approach over three years. We've tested it over 70,000 sites. So we've really been able to hone how we can help clients become more sustainable and more profitable. All of that complexity is encapsulated in a RESTful API. It's easy to use and scale, and previous connections, real connections with real clients, have taken about five hours. So some return on investment examples, if you like. So major food producers with our predictions could have reduce their van visits, which were in the tens of thousands a day, thousands a day at least, by visiting some sites less often. They, there could, they therefore could optimise their route planning. So again, it was a small change, but it resulted in 25% less visits. By having more confidence in their focus planning, another distributor was able to ensure they can balance returns and stockouts more effectively. They reduced their stockouts stockouts by at least 75% and their waste was dramatically reduced by up to 80%. But these are, these are big companies. What about smaller companies? So the business case of a family-owned baker was also substantial. 
savings were equivalent to 10% of their revenue. And they were there for the taking just by managing their waste downwards, by making small improvements for a crop every day for a year. So a few notes to reiterate what we've been talking about, bring it all together a little bit, I hope. So we sit alongside existing forecasts. We don't ask you to swap out what you're doing now. We can actually use the insights that you can bring from your forecast into our models. We can create the view of your customer's customer by giving you local site. So um, in partnership, Distributors and retail sites, or even producers in the end retail sites, can share data through us so that the warehouses and the producers can um, be more efficient. They can even take the next step where these partnerships can create suggested orders. So rather than relying on the retails chain to make an order blindly, they can make a suggested order which then can be adjusted. This then suppresses the, the wild um, ball of effects. These are all measurable business benefits. And we, what we do is we actually measure the business outcomes every couple of weeks, making sure that what we're doing is making a substantial difference. And if it doesn't make a difference, we tell you. So, in two weeks, we would expect an ROI. Now, this is two weeks for a year's subscription. You can be connected in five hours and you can connect to your customer's customer without doing anything. You just have to sponsor us to go and talk to them. You can make up to 80% improvements on your waste and your stockouts without really making any substantial changes to your operating model. But the market in AI solutions is full of grandiose claims and unrealized promises. So that may, that may make you understandably skeptical. So for us, there are no set up fees, no capex. There's a reasonable subscription charge that's based on usage and it's linear backed up by a business case promise. The business case promise is, if it doesn't give you what you need, you can cancel at any point. But if it does work, what other solution can give you an ROI in two weeks? So I'm coming to the end, uh, just on time actually. So I'll finish with three points. So um, for anyone that's interested in using BigML in their solution or idea, I'd, just, I'd be delighted to share my experience in as much detail or high level as you need, get in contact. Full disclosure, of course, I'm, I'm a big fan, huge supporter. Um, if you're in any part of the chain from producer to shop front and you want to make a difference quickly, challenge us. Give us a use case. Are you a software provider in that chain? Do you need to show an AI capability or perhaps you want to give your clients something extra? Talk to us. Here are my details and you can find me on LinkedIn too if you like. But on that note, thank you very much for your attention. And I'll hand back to Mario Isus and Atakan. Stephen Keynes, CEO and co-founder at Katsayai, and Atakan Chetinsoy, VP of Predictive Applications here at BigML. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. It's uh, been very interesting, really great presentations to the both of you. And have a good day, afternoon or evening, depending where you are located. Bye-bye.